Hello everyone, Lizelle Crowley here at the Cool Tools Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a great project using jewel stamps. And I'm going to show you how to use one stamp two ways. Once where you impress the stamp in the clay and once where you create a mold with the stamp and use that to create a piece. To do this project you're going to need the following items. A stone setting template, textures for the back of the piece, Jewel stamp of your choice, two part mold making material, mega mold, coil roller in either narrow or wide, whichever is your preference, thickness frames, ultra clay pick, tweezers, brush and water, clay hydrator, and we're going to use Easy 960 Sterling clay for this project. And I love this clay for this because I make a very delicate bail on it and the strength of the Easy 960 Sterling is just perfect for that. Cool slip, sanding materials, and that's what we need. Let's get started. So jewel stamps come in a variety of uh, designs and you get several options in each package and I really love the way they work with the metal clay, both to impress in and also to make a mold of. The first thing we're going to do is actually make a mold of the jewel stamp that I'm going to use today. So I'm going to peel it off. This is the one I've selected and I'm going to peel it off its backing sheet. Set these aside. And now I'm going to take a coil roller and just pop that on there and it will adhere very nicely. The next step is to take the um, two-part mold making material, Mega Mold. And this is a little individual um, packet that you can get. This will actually make several molds, even though it's a small amount, because you're using equal parts of each color. So I like to just um, use my eyeball to determine equal amounts. So I'm going to pull out a little ball of one color And I find if I roll it in a ball, it's easier to tell if I have equal amounts. So there I've got two balls, roughly the same, pretty, pretty much the same size. Seal this back up and set it. And then as you can see, there's plenty left to make other molds. The next step is to knead this together. And it's just a process that takes I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute. You want to knead it together until it's a uniform color. And that's what you want it to look like. Now you have about five minutes before it sets. And what I like to do is uh, work on a tough card. And I'll place my mega mold on the tough card. And I like to take my thickness frames and just get this to a uniform depth. So I've got a whole bunch of thickness frames here and I'm just going to roll that very gently. And then I'll take away a few frames. Now when I go to create my mold, as I press, I just press down and this will make a nice level mold of the jewel stamp. And all I have to do is let that sit there for about five minutes and then I'll have my finished mold. So I pulled the tough card off the back of the mold and now I'm getting ready to unmold it. But before I do, I want to make sure it's completely set. And the way that I do that is I just press my fingernail into the surface. And if it leaves an impression, it's not completely set. But if it, you can see there's a very slight impression there, so I'm going to wait just a, maybe another minute to make sure. So I've waited a little bit, and now I'm going to try again. And now I can see that it's really not leaving an impression, so I'm going to go ahead and unmold it. And all I'm going to do is just lift it right off. And look at that perfect mold. So this can be used in a variety of ways. And using the mold making material gives you double duty for the jewel stamps. So you can make an impressed design and you can make an embossed 
design using the exact same jewel stamp. The next thing I'm going to do is create the bezel for the cubic zirconias. And as you can see, the bezel does stick up a little bit above the pendant, but it also, the pendant itself will take up some of the depth of the stone. So I create the bezel for this halfway up the stone, and then when I attach it to the pendant, the pendant will take up the other half. And I'll show you what I mean as we work. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my stone, put it upside down, and use the frames to determine the depth of the stone. I'll start with an 8 card. And 6. Let's see how that is. I use my coil roller for so many things. I love that tool. And here we go. This is a good depth. So I want to do maybe two-thirds of this depth. So I'm going to go down to the eight and the two and I'm going to reserve the six because that will be the depth of the pendant. So now I'm going to take a ball of the nine, Easy 960 Sterling Clay, which is a dream to work with, and I'm going to roll it around to smooth the surface and then press. And that gives me a relatively thick patty of clay. Now I'm going to take the stone setting template for the square CZ, and these are calibrated to the size of the stone, and they come in pretty much every shape of stone and size of stone that you could imagine. Um, I'm actually using a six millimeter CZ, square CZ, so I'm going to use this particular template, and I'm going to cut out my center hole using the Ultra Clay Pick, which is again one of my favorite tools. I'm going to cut around a few times and then the clay will just lift out of the center. And I want it really smooth in there, so I'm just going to go around one more time to make sure it's nice and smooth. Take my template away, and I always like to press one more time after I've cut that hole. It just seems to flatten that clay down and make it more stable. Now, I'm not going to set this point side down. I'm going to set this point side up because remember this is only half the depth that I need my bezel to be. So I've got it face down and I'm going to use my coil roller to just press it in there. Sometimes it'll go on an angle so I have to get my clay pick in there to get it level. There we go. And again, I'm going to press again just to make sure it's nice and level. The next step is to cut away the bezel part, and that's where the calibrated bezel template comes in again. I can just set it on here, hold it down, and cut around. Cut away the excess clay. And it looks just like, it looks a little rough, but after it's dried and sanded, it'll look a lot smoother. I do like to bring in my fingers and just sort of press around the outer edge. I can also bring in my little um, scraper and just sort of compress around the sides. So this will go in the dehydrator and it will be dried and sanded and then set in the pendant. And I will do the same thing for the pink CZ that I've just done for the purple CZ. So I've just finished sanding my CZ so it's ready to set into the pendant. And this is the pendant I'm going to make now. This is the one that I use the jewel stamp to impress into the clay. So to begin, I'm going to roll my clay out eight cards thick. And I want to use plenty of clay so that I definitely get the full motif in when I impress it. I love this 
fatter PVC style rolling pin because the clay just doesn't stick to it and the wider surface of it allows me to roll very smoothly and quickly. Now I'm going to place the clay on a lubricated texture. I'm going to take my lubricated, I'm going to take my four card thick rolling frame and put it down and then take my lubricated jewel stamp and place it over the top. Now I'm going to press down with firm even pressure and that frame will keep me to four cards thick. I'll just rotate slightly to make sure I get all the edges done. And I'll lift that up. You see I have a beautiful impression on the front and I have a lovely texture on the back. Now I'll place this on a tough card. And I'm just going to trim out the edges. And I like to leave a little bit of, of a frame as I cut. So I'm going to come in at a slight angle and just cut down. So it looks like you're using a lot of clay when you first start, but it really you're really trimming away quite a bit. You could alternatively use a square template to cut this out, but I like to just hand trim like this. It may not be a perfect square, but I like things to look handmade rather than manufactured, so I'm fine with it if it's not perfect. I am going to trim this a little bit more. I can also fine tune that when I sand, fine tune the shape. The next step is to attach the stone. So I'm going back to my original stone setting template. Now, I don't want to press down on this because I'll obscure the texture, so I'm going to use a frame to raise the, the template up so I can hold it down firmly without flattening out my texture. And I'm going to take my clay pick, straight up and down. I do need to um, keep it from moving, so I do have to place slight pressure on it. And I'm just going to cut out that center hole. Just get rid of these little crumbs of clay. Now this is the seat for this. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because it's not really, it's going to be covered over with this. So I'm not so worried about how the top of this looks, but I just want to make sure my hole is really clean. Now I'm going to just very generously wet the back of this bezel. Really saturate it. And then I'm going to place it right down there with the stone going down into that hole. And whenever I attach things, I like to just move them slightly until they catch. I'm going to look at it from all angles to make sure it's where I want it. And then that's ready to go in the dehydrator. I'll dry this, sand the outside, and attach a bale, and then the piece will be done. So this is my other CZ. I've just finished sanding the bezel and now I'm going to create the embossed template where I impress the clay into the mold that I made of the jewel stamp. So here's my mold and you can see that there's a lot of depth to that mold. So I want to make sure I use enough clay to really get the detail. So I'm going to take a rather large lump of the EZ960 and I'm going to use my eight and six card thick frames to create an initial patty of clay. And I'll roughly trim that into a square shape. And now I'm going to set that into the mold. And first I'm going to press in with my fingers. And as I do this, I'm moving the clay into all the corners. Once I've done that step, 
I've got this vinyl texture that I pre-lubricated. Isn't that pretty? And I think that this design will go really well with the design that's on the front. And I'm going to get that onto the back. And press with my fingers initially, and then I'm just going to take my coil roller and, pr and press. And that's to try to even out the back. I can even take a rolling pin and just roll over it. And that gives me a textured back and an embossed front. Now I'll take my piece, place it on a tough card, and come in and just trim out the edges. And I'm not going to have a frame around this one, but I want to trim away all that excess. And I'm going to just trim at a slight angle. I'm just holding it with my finger to keep it from moving. Take all these trimmings away. And next I'm going to set my stone in the center. So I'm going to put my frames back in place. Take my original stone setting template. Cut out that center square. Always reclaim your clay before you do anything else so it doesn't get dried out. And just as I did on the other piece, I'm going to apply water to the back of this bezel very generously. And place that on the top. Move it just slightly until it catches. And then this piece is ready to go into the dehydrator to be dried, sanded, and then a bale will be attached. So here's both pieces, and I've sanded them both. And now I'm going to put a bale on this piece. So I'm going to take a very small piece of the clay. It doesn't have to be a lot. And I'm going to roll a thin coil. And I want to taper the ends. I like a fairly delicate bale. You can certainly make a heavier bale if it's your preference. I'm going to place my, and I'm going to look at the piece and decide how I want to orient it. And I've decided that this is going to be my top point. So I'm going to place it on the tough card. I'm going to take my coil and just loop it around. And once I've looped it around, I'm going to wet the ends and wet my pendant and then attach them on the side. And then I can just flip that so it's upright. If you want, you can also stick a toothpick or something in there to help hold it up. Now you can see it's longer on one side than the other. It's longer on this side than this side which I could leave if I wanted it asymmetrical or I can trim. So I'll just come in and trim with my needle tool. And because the pendant is, has been dried and sanded, I don't have to worry about gouging my pendant as I'm doing the trimming. And the final step, if I want, is to add some embellishments to the bale. So I again will create some very tiny balls of clay. And I'd like to just roll them in my fingers. Uh, some people like to roll them on the work surface, but for some reason that doesn't work for me. But find whatever way works for you. Dampen where you're going to put it. Place it. And I have a little dish of Cool Slip handy. I can dip my finger in the Cool Slip so it won't stick. And I'll just 
Actually, let me use my pinky because it's smaller. Push that down. Okay, and I can also add balls on the side if I want. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think for this piece, for these I did, I have three balls on each side. But I think for this one, I'm going to leave it plain. And I will do the exact same thing to this. Then they'll be fired, polished, and patinaed, and I'll show you the finished pieces. Okay, so here are the finished pieces. They've been tumbled, patinaed, and polished. And you can see how the different ways of working with a jewel stamp will give you different effects. And there's another example using a different jewel stamp. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.